Hello and welcome. Today we're doing Merge Sorted Array from Leak Code. This is the very first question of Top Interview 150. If you don't know, there are three major playlists if you are interview prepping. There's Leak Code 75, Blind 75, and Top Interview 150. So this question is the first from that third playlist. So let's get into this question. You are given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, sorted in non-decreasing order and two integers m and n representing the number of elements in nums of 1 and nums of 2, respectively. Merge nums 1 and nums 2 into a single array sorted in non-decreasing order, that same order that we've been keeping in nums 1 and nums 2, and the final sorted array should not be returned by the function but instead be stored inside the array nums 1. To accommodate this, nums 1 has a length of m plus n, where the first m elements denote the elements that should be merged and the last n elements are set to 0 and should be ignored. Nums2 has a length of n. So we're given nums1 that has a length of m plus n, but only the first m numbers are the ones that we want to consider from nums1. The others are just placeholders for when we finally merge nums2 into nums1, and nums2 has n elements. So example one, we have nums1, m, nums2, and 3. So we can see here the first three elements are technically what we really want to consider for nums1. These are just placeholders keeping space for when we merge nums2 into nums1. So once we finally do that merge, we want to keep that non-decreasing sorted order. We're going to get 1, 2, 2, 3, 5, 6. And we're going to store that all in nums1. Example 2, we have 1 and nothing in nums2, so nums1 stays what it was. And example 3, this time we have nothing in nums1. It's 0. So this is just a placeholder for the elements we have in nums2. We have one element there, so in the end, nums1 of one is just going to have 1 in there. Okay, a follow-up. Can you come up with an algorithm that runs in O of M plus N time? Okay, now before doing any question, before jumping into the code, we always want to start off with examples. This is because this will let us visualize exactly what we should be doing. It lets us see our logic through. So say we have the following example. We have nums1 over here, N is 3, and nums2, N is 2. And we can see both are sorted in non-decreasing order. Now, if we were to merge both of these lists together, we know we want to merge nums2 into nums of 1. So if we were to do that, we know we start with the smallest number first and work our way up. So we would go negative 1, then 1, then the next smallest would be 3, so it would go in this place right here, followed by 5, and the 6 would actually get moved over here. This is going to get a little tricky if we were to do it this way. If we were to put a 3 here, we don't know where we should be moving the 6 Two, right? We want to be shifting elements. What if we accidentally overwrite it? So instead of worrying about that, what we can do instead is the exact opposite. Start on this end over here. We know the ends are already placeholders, right? They're just zeros. We don't really care about the values in them. So what we can do is start off at this end. And instead of increasing order, we're going to start with our largest element first and work our way down in nums of one. So what I'm going to do is have two pointers. So for nums of one, what is the greatest element in this array? We know we're only concerned with the first three elements, right? So it's going to be that third element over here. So that is going to be at index m minus one because in Python, we are zero indexed. So this is index zero. This is one and this is two. So p1 right now, this is my pointer, is at index two. Now for nums of two, what is the largest element we have? It's going to be at the very end over here at index n minus one. So again, we have index zero and then we have index one. So P2 is going to be at index one. So I'm also going to write them out over here. P1 right now equals M minus one and P2 equals N minus one. So at index one over here and index two over here. So now what I wanna do is iterate through both nums of one and nums of two while my pointers are greater than equal to zero. So while there are still numbers to process in both P1 and P2. So while P1 is greater than equal to zero and P2 is greater than equal to zero, I want to get the value at these pointers. So N1 and N2, what are they going to equal? Well, that's going to be nums of one at index P1 and nums of two at index P2 respectively. So right now N1 is at six over here because that's the value at P1 in nums of one and N2 is five over here, the value we have at P2 within nums of two. Now we want to compare. We want to see which one has the greatest value. So if n1 is greater than n2, which in this scenario it is, right? 6 is greater than 5. I want to take that 6 and place it at the very end. 
So I'm also going to have a third pointer pointing to where my insert position is. So insert right now is going to be the very end of nums of one. So it's length of nums of one minus one. So insert is right over here. Now, if this is the case, right, n1 is greater than n2, nums of 1 at insert is going to hold n2. So right now we're just putting a6 in here. So now what do we want to do? We want to move p1 down and our insert index. So p1 minus equals 1 and insert minus equals 1. We're just bringing this down to point to the next largest element that we haven't yet covered in nums of 1. And we move our next insert position down as well. So just writing this out over here so we can keep track of all the values, our current insert position is index three over here, zero, one, two, three. P1 has moved down to index one and P2 stays where it is at index one. Now, if this wasn't the case, right? If N1 wasn't greater than N2, we wanna do the exact opposite. So else the nums of one at that insert position is going to be what we have in N2. Oh, this actually should have been N1 over here. N1 was the greater value, so we want to put N1 in there. Now, if that's not the case, if N1 doesn't have the greater value, then we put in N2 and we want to move down P2 and insert again. So P2 is going to be minus equals 1 and we want to move insert down again. And since we want to do this both in the if and else condition, we can just refactor this out over here. So once we finish our if else, either way, no matter which block we end up going in, we still want to move insert down. So we just finished that first iteration of our while loop. Let's go back and see how this plays out. So far, we only placed in one element, right? P1 is over here, P2 is here, our next insert position is here. Now, since both P1 and P2 are greater than or equal to zero, we wanna get what N1 and N2 are. So N1 is going to be one and N2 stays at five. Now, if N1 greater than N2, that is not true. So we don't go in this if, we go in this else instead. What we're gonna do is at nums one of insert, put in n2. So five goes in here and now we move p2 down. So it's at index zero and we move insert down as well. So it's at index two. We go back in this while loop, both p1 and p2 are greater than or equal to zero. So we get the values that we have at those indices. So n1 is going to be one and n2 is going to be three. If n1 greater than n2, that is not true. So we go in this else, nums of one at insert is going to hold n2. So this is going to have three and we move P2 down. And now we also move insert down. So now once we go back in this while loop, we see we actually can't go into it anymore, right? P2 is no longer greater than or equal to zero. We finished going through nums of two. So P2 now points at index negative one. We've gone through every single element we needed to go through. And if you notice, nums of one is already sorted. If P2 finishes before nums of one, there's nothing to compare against for nums of one. So the next largest element is already in its place. So we don't need to do anything here. The only time we would need to do something after exiting this while loop is if P1 finished before P2. So say I have the following example instead, we basically just finished doing nums one and nums two. This is our final nums one. So say instead of looking at that, now we have this example over here, nums one is the following m is one and nums two is this over here. If we went in this while loop, we know that p1, the value at p1 would be greater than the value at p2. So we would put that value, the greater value of five in our insert position and move this down. So we move this down. So now insert would be at index one and p1 would be at negative one. So we went through all the elements we needed to for nums of one. Now nums of two has not finished. So while nums of two still has elements, so while P2 is greater than or equal to zero, all we need to do is place these right in our insert position as we move down. So nums of one at insert is just going to equal nums two at P2. And we just move P2 down and insert down as well. So right now for this example, we're out of this while loop, right? P1 is not greater than or equal to zero anymore. So this whole condition is false because both of these need to be true to go in this while. So now we're over here in this while loop. While P2 is greater than or equal to zero, that is true, it's at index one. Nums of one at this insert position is just going to hold this value, what we have in nums two at P2. So one is over here, we move P2 down, we move insert down, and we do the same thing again, right? So this is just gonna hold zero. We move P2 down, and we don't go in this while loop anymore because now it's at negative one. And if you notice, this is now sorted. We have zero, one, and five. So the only time we will go in this while loop is if P2 still has elements remaining. If not, there's no need to go in this while loop because nums of one is already going to have everything sorted. 
Now we don't need to return anything. We just modify nums one in place. So this is all we really need to do. Let's go ahead and submit this. One time error name, num1 is not defined. That's because this should be nums of one. Now let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talking about space and time complexity for space, we are modifying nums1 in place. There's no extra space really being used. So this is going to be constant O of one. And for time, we're going through all the elements that are present in both P1 and P2. And we know they're going to be M elements in P1 and N in P2. So this is actually an O of M plus N runtime. So we just went ahead and solved a merge sorted array. The very first question in top interview 150. We did a complete walkthrough with two different examples. But if you have any questions, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. And if this video was helpful, like, comment, subscribe, share. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.